Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sydney Cannon, I'm a Shenandoah Valley wedding and portrait photographer, and today I'm giving you my best tips for planning wedding family formals. Family pictures are one of the most overlooked and underplanned parts of the wedding day. But did you know that a well-planned family formals list can make the wedding day go super smoothly and make sure everyone's happy? But an underplanned wedding family formals list can actually make everyone unhappy and stress the heck out of the couple? Don't worry. Today, I'm giving you my full family formal strategy so that you feel prepared for your wedding day and you will be happy from the outcome. Number one, who do you include in your family formals list? You're not gonna wanna hear me say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Only include immediate family. I'm gonna say it again. Only include immediate family. This includes parents, siblings, grandparents, and the families of your siblings. No more, no aunts and uncles, no cousins, no super close members of the family or anything like that, okay? The only exceptions to this is if you have a super close uncle who officiated the ceremony or super, super close family friends that practically raised you, that's it, okay? No one else because there's several things that happen when you start to include aunts and uncles and you don't want any of it. Here's what happens when you start to include aunts and uncles and cousins and everyone else. Number one, family formals take way longer because we have way more people to photograph and way more groupings that you want to do. Second, it's going to take even longer than that because inevitably there's going to be an uncle who wanders off to go get a drink and we're going to have to go find him and track him down while everyone's waiting for him to hop into the photo that we've already set up. Number three, you'll have so many people waiting in line to have their family formals taken that you're going to have friends of the family and other extended family watching all this and feel left out. So you as the couple are gonna feel obligated to include them too. So not only do you already have a super long family formals list, but you're gonna be adding to it in the moment to make people feel better. So it takes even longer. Next, when you include that many people, there's just no way to systematically get them all so that it's the most efficient and most time worthy of your time there's just too many people and too many things happening. Next, these family formals take so long that you'll be standing there for over 30, 40 minutes, smiling at the camera. Your cheeks are gonna start hurting and your smile is gonna get less and less genuine with every photo. So that by the time you get to the end, you're just grimacing and you just want to get out of this. Lastly, if we are taking so many family formals, we are losing valuable time to get photos with you of your bridal party and newlywed portraits. We want to use this best light for these photos that you're going to cherish the most in the end. So. In short, no one is happy when you have two people on your family formals list, especially you, and that's what I really care about. It's part of my job to help you have the best day ever, so I'm going to say it again. Only include immediate family in your family formals list. But here's your compromise. Everyone else you wanna get photos with, we will get them during the reception or during cocktail hour. We will get you photos with everyone. If you want me to follow you around during cocktail hour or during the reception, so I can get group photos of you with every table or just walking around getting groups of people, I will happily do that and you'll see why. Firstly, everyone is loose and having fun. The ceremony's over, they have a few drinks in them, they have some food in them, and they're getting ready to look forward to parties. So that when you walk up to them and you're like, hey, let's get a group picture, everyone is going to be extremely happy. Instead of them waiting in line when they could be getting drinks or getting food, you'll be saying, hey, it's your turn, let's get a photo while we're having fun. We want to remember this fun party instead of everyone waiting in line to get photos with you. Next, the photos really don't look that different. I'm going to pull up some official family photos photos and some cocktail family photos and you really can't tell the difference. So really, you don't need to include everyone in your family formals list to get a photo with everyone. In the end, everyone is happy. Okay, now I'm going to talk about how you order family photos. This is my step-by-step -step system for efficiently going through family photos so that we minimize movement and maximize our time together. I'm going to assume that this is a traditional family with a bride, a groom, both sets of parents, both have grandparents, and each have two siblings with families. Alter as you need, this is just for me so I can talk through it, but obviously not every family is like this. This is just how I would do it if I had this family and I would alter from there. Number one, I start with a big family photo. Because we only have this many people, we can actually get everyone in one photo. So you have one big immediate family photo. From there, we choose one side of the family, either the bride's side or the groom's side. Typically, I go with the side that has the oldest grandparents. So if I have a, the bride's side, for example, has 90-year-old grandparents on her side that can't be outside very long, but the groom has some younger grandparents that are okay with waiting for a little bit, we're gonna start with the bride's side. 
So I asked the groom's side to please sit down probably in the seats that they were just sitting in for the ceremony and to please not run away. Their time will be in less than 10 minutes and we really don't want to have to track them down. So I tell them to please sit right there. You will be up soon. Then I tell all of the bride's family to come and be with her. Remember, this is only parents, grandparents, siblings, and their siblings' families. So not a lot of people, but we get first that big group shot and then all of the bride's family. After this, I have everyone but the grandparents leave. So it's the grandparents plus the couple. Then I ask the groom to step out so I can get a photo with just the bride and her grandparents. Once we do this photo, the grandparents are done and I can release them to cocktail hour so they can go get warm, go sit down, whatever else they need to do. Then I add in the bride's parents, get a photo of her with both parents, then one with her dad, one with her mom, and then I include, then I bring back the groom and get one of all four of them. Then I add the bride's siblings, so we have the couple, the parents, and her siblings. Then I add in the siblings' families, so it's everything without the grandparents. Then after this, after this big group photo, we do any other last combinations the bride wants to get with her side of the family. Then when all those combinations are done, I completely release everyone on the bride's side of the family so they can go to cocktail hour and we just redo the whole thing with the groom side of the family. I know that was a lot of talking, so make sure that you go over to the blog post that goes along with this video so you can see me lay it out step by step in this long wordy format and then also where I say B plus G, you know, B plus G plus B's parents. So it's very step by step oriented. So if there's a little lot, so there's a lot of words for you, make sure that you go over to that blog post so you can see it laid out systematically. So I do this particular order for a number of reasons. Number one, it minimizes the movement of the bride. This is especially important if she has a really big dress that's hard to move around in, or if her train is really long and people might step on it, or if I have to keep fluffing her dress every time she moves it. So this minimizes that whole movement. Second, it releases the grandparents back to cocktail hour as soon as possible. I don't want them waiting around out in the cold or standing around saying, can I go yet? Can I go yet? Is it time yet? I want to give them a very definitive time saying, yes, you are released. Please go take care of yourselves. Next, the siblings are usually in the bridal party, so we get more photos with them later on, especially those individual photos with the bride and groom. So I don't necessarily include them in this family formals list because I know I'm gonna get them again later if I haven't already gotten several of them earlier in the day. And lastly, we do it this way so that one family knows it's their time and the other family knows to wait and not to leave because they will be up soon. So that is the way I do my family formals and how I highly suggest you do too. Obviously, change it up so it fits your family dynamics. If you have divorced parents or more family members, change it up. And if you're one of my couples, I will happily create your family formals list with you, but that's how I do it. So with this system, we are getting all the extremely family formals in at one time as efficiently and happily as possible. So everyone is released to cocktail hour very quickly and they're happy with the photos they have. Okay, if you are making your own family formals list, here's how I recommend you do it. Step one, write down all the immediate family members you want to go on this list. Write them all down on a piece of paper. Step two is to write down their names and how they're related to you. It is so much easier for a photographer like myself to say Sally and Joe, bride's parents, instead of saying parents, because that confuses everyone and it takes too much long, too much time. So make sure you're writing down the names, how they're related to you, and then step three, separate them by what side of the family they're on. So put one column all the bride's families and then one column all the groom's families. Step four is you can either give me the list if I'm your photographer or you can plug it into the list that I said earlier and that's also on my blog. This is when you alter it so that it most fits your specific family. Step five, tell those family members that they are going to be part of this time of the day. Tell them that as soon as the ceremony is done, they are not released to cocktail hour, they stay right where they are because we're more than likely going to get family photos with them at the ceremony spot. So tell each and every one of them, I want you there during this time, please do not run away. Step six is a bonus step. Tell your officiant to tell the audience right after your ceremony, once you've done the recessional, make sure you tell everyone, say, hey everyone, you are now released to cocktail hour, except for the immediate family members, you stay right here. You should know who you are because the couple told you. Everyone else, please make your way to cocktail hour and I will see you there. This is a last minute reminder for those family members that they know not to go anywhere. And it also creates a very clear boundary so that everyone else who doesn't 
So everyone else who knows they aren't part of that immediate families list, they aren't, be, they aren't gonna be waiting around to get those photos and they will instead just go right to cocktail hour. And step number seven, as you're doing that recessional, make sure that you don't go running away. I really don't need to go chasing after the bride and groom after they've done the recessional when all their family members are waiting for them right after the ceremony. So please make sure to do your recessional, but don't go very far. We want you to be with your family members so we can make it efficient as possible. And that's my recipe for easy family formals. Planning this part of the day is often overlooked, but it really can make the difference between a great experience and an okay experience. Make sure that you are planning this part of the day so that everyone is as happy as possible and you get the most amount of photos that you want. Make sure that you are going back to that blog post so you can get that list of family formals. Also, while you're there, be sure to check out all the other blog posts I have. I have a bunch of tips for couples who are planning their weddings, especially when it comes to the photography parts of the day. I have videos that go along with all of those, so make sure you're checking out my channel, subscribing to it, liking all the videos you like so I know which ones to make more of, and make sure you're checking back every Thursday to see what videos I had coming out next. Comment down below if these tips were helpful for you and I will love to make more. If you have any questions, please like, leave a comment and I'll either talk you through it or I'll create a video just for you. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.